Hi, I'm James, and in this video I'm taking a quick first look at a pair of new Intel Nook products. Uh, these have been out for a little while, I've just got my hands on the two of them. Uh, we have the Nook 6 i3 SYH, which is the i3 based product, and then we also have the Nook 6 i5 SYH. Um, which is the same chassis, um, same basic feature set, but using the i5 processor. Um, if we take a look on the box, we can see both have the same layout of ports. We can see i3, i5. And on the back, we can see we have a Iris graphics logo on here because uh, we have HD 520 graphics with the i3. Uh, whereas for the i5 we get iris, I believe it's 540 or yes, iris 540 graphics um, because there we go, so that gives that. Um, so what we're going to do is we're just going to open up the i5 system. So inside the box it should be pretty familiar for anyone who's used sort of these Nook systems in the past. So we have the unit itself, we have your usual warranty cards and instruction manuals, McAfee junk, we have a little Core i5 6th generation sticker, a Visa mounting bracket for attaching it to the back of a monitor, screws to go with that, and then our power adapter and other bits and pieces in here. Um, so universe power, little power brick and the different plug types to go onto that. Now putting this new 6th gen Nook here alongside the previous 5th gen, this is actually an i3 5th gen, and we can see while the basic layout from the front is very similar, um, we have the two super speed ports, one which will provide more power for the USB, and then we have slightly different plugs here for the headphone or audio output. Uh, we also have a little LED here, which is missing from the old one. I think we had the IR receiver in there, so slight changes. Also slightly more height in these new 6th generation units. Moving around to the back, and we see a few more changes here. Um, the display port and various bits have moved around. We now don't have the mini HDMI connector, we have a full HDMI connector, full size. Uh, really handy. Um, they've gone with these over the past few generations of Nooks. Um, they had to recess it in on the 5th gen ones because the 4th gen ones it was very hard to get a good connection. Um, personally I'm going to be using one of the Club 3D adapters when I set this up with my 4K telly. Um, so that I can drive uh, DisplayPort to HDMI 2.0. Only still HDMI 1.4, so 4K 30 frames per second if you're using the built-in HDMI port. Uh, Skylake still doesn't support HDMI 2 natively, uh, although there are some things, I think the Skull Canyon systems uh, have an adapter using DisplayPort to then do HDMI 2 built-in. We're going to use an external one with this particular unit. Um, other than that, again, pair of USB 3 ports, Ethernet, power, and DisplayPort. So same basic connectivity, just slightly differently arranged. And then looking to the side, you can see on here we have the cooling vents, Kensington lock, which previously I don't believe was, yep, yeah, Kensington lock on the other side previously. We also have an SDXC card reader, which again, not on the previous generation. And on the other side, we can see we just have those cooling vents. And on the old ones, we had the Kensington lock there. Now, looking inside the Nook, and as with all the previous generations, we go into it through the base. So we just need a screwdriver here. Undo the four screws in the feet. And the base, because this is the taller version of the chassis that can take both M2 drives and a 2.5 inch hard drive, um, is attached with a cable, so we're just going to pull that up with the feet and then fold it forward so that way 
you can see here we have the space here where on the back we have our SATA connectors and our 2.5 inch drive can go in here. We also then have along here space for our M2 drive and our DDR4 SODIMS. So this takes 1.2 volt DDR4 SODIMS, not DDR3. And um, we have a pair of four gigabyte modules. So as normal, we can fit them as so. With those clipped in place, we now have eight gigs of memory installed. And now we are going to use a small crosshead screwdriver to undo the screw that's used to retain the SSD. And this is a SATA um, M2 SSD, but the socket is keyed so that it should also be able to take um, M2, uh, what do you call them, uh, PCI Express or um, NVMe SSDs, uh, unlike the UX305CA which had a second keying pin there, this does not, so it can take either type of SSD. So we have that, we have a 120 gig SSD fitted there. So now putting in the SSD and if we look in through this way we can see the connectors are on the bottom there, so we put them in as so. We can push down on the drive through that gap to line it up at the base. Um, we can, if we want, then also screw it in here. Um, I'm not going to worry too much, I'm not going to be moving this around a lot, so I'm going to leave that as is. And then we can just fold that top back over, take our screwdriver, and like that, we have our Nook assembled and ready to set up. I hope you found this video useful. Um, be sure to check out the other videos on my channel as I will be taking further looks at these particular Nooks and what they offer and what they can do in terms of gaming performance in the near future. Um, be sure to subscribe if you want to see those as they come out. Thanks for watching.